Welcome back to Crystal Clear on the Roundtable. I'm Ostrich Vox, and we got a new Seamers trailer on Monday for six new episodes dropping on the Cartoon Network app. I know I'm a little bit late on my promise for this breakdown, but here we are. It's a beautiful day with all you beautiful people, so let's just get down to business, shall we? But before we get into the meat of things, quick shout out to our patron, Gaster5XG. Gaff's channel features breakdowns, theories, entertaining rants, memes, and a lot more. He's also been a huge supporter of the Roundtable for a while and is active in our Discord server, so he's an MVP. Check out and subscribe to his channel, we'd really appreciate it. Be sure to also follow him on Twitter at GaffsterTunes. You won't regret it. Alright, so back to our Steven Universe breakdown. Roll the clip. I wish I could tell you that I- <laughs> Roth the Bat, Steven is playing his ukulele and has crafted the makings of a wonderful song. Saying, I wish that I could tell you that I- Which, we could assume is him coping with us falling out with Connie in the beginning of Dewey Wins. What do you want to tell Connie, Steven? Huh? Is it that you love her? It is, isn't it? The shippers need to know, Steven. We may actually have a Nurse Sardonic's arc situation on our hands, where two lead characters don't speak to each other for a handful of episodes. I don't believe it'll be an entire bomb's warp, as the two need to rectify their issues before the episode Lars of the Stars. Which, I'm hopeful that it'll be included in these six new episodes. I told you he'd answer! It's so good to see you! I'm glad you're okay. Steven's private jam session gets interrupted by Paradigm Lapis finally being relevant to the plot, after being conveniently barned while Topaz and Aquamarine were snatching up people left and right from Beat City. No grudges. Now, you may assume this could be from Dewey Wins, but I don't think it is. If anything, I believe this is the episode after Dewey Wins. You can tell because Dewey Wins is animated by Studio Rough Draft, the less favorable of the two studios that handle the show. Episodes by them generally have thinner lines, and the art can be a bit janky, while this scene is animated by Studio SMIP, in my opinion, the better studio. Their art has varying line depth and overall just looks beautiful. If you're interested in me doing a dedicated video to talking about the two studios and their differences, let me know in the comments. Anywho, this seems to be the first episode storyboarded by Amber Cragg, who was previously a revisionist on the show. She tweeted her first episode goes online next week, and these episodes are dropping on the app next week and Lapis in these scenes matches her take on the character, so that's very exciting and what an episode to start on! I also appreciate that if this is her, she gave Pumpkin's tongue a little more detail with Pumpkin Gut Curves. Paradigm and Lapis clarified that they are aware Steven was on Homeworld, so the question then becomes, when did the Crystal Gems inform them, and why weren't they present at the end of Lars's head? Unless they were helping the gems fix the ship, but they went back to the barn instead of warping to the temple with everybody else. That's neither here or there, as this is the same scene where Steven explains to the two that he ran from his trial, which leads to Lapis slipping out and paranoid that war is on the horizon. In fact, this trailer ends with her furiously ending the call. Also, love that there's an alien emoji substituting the O for Paradox contact on Steven's phone. It's the little things that count and make these characters feel more lifelike. And that is why you should vote for me! We have Dewey's opposer finally revealed, and it's not Suke Sam or Buck, but Nana Fuao Pizza. This comes as a shock to me, but as Swaggy Thunder pointed out, Nana Fuao is actually based off of Ian Jones Cordy's grandma, Theodasia Oko. Theodasia was a Ghanaian stateswoman, a political figure who designed Ghana's national flag and played a huge part in the development of hockey in Ghana. So, with political history in mind, applying that legacy to Nana Fuao's character makes a bit of sense actually. Plus, she's hilarious and one of my favorite characters, and I'm so glad she's in the spotlight. It's been way too long. Also makes me wonder if Nana Files related to the background character incarnation of Ian JQ. Just going off Sadie walking away from the crowd, and the fact they're at Fish 2 Pizza, I'm thinking this is the same episode Sadie's sleep deprived, worried about Lars, and the same episode where Steven puts up the missing lion poster. Also, not entirely sure what Go, Gunja Go, and Gunja Got It means on Jenny and Kiki's signs, I'm assuming that maybe that's the nickname or surname of Nanafwile. However, an interesting detail is the Down with Dewey sign held by an unnamed female Beach City citizen. That exact phrasing and handwriting is identical to the face Dewey Van, Connie, Paradigm, and Lapis cleaned up in the new Crystal Gems. So I guess we know who the perpetrator is now. I guess the public's turn on Dewey has been a slow yet greatly overdue one. Later on, we actually see a riot outside of Town Hall. And Dewey looks so sad, actually almost makes me feel bad for the dude, despite how horrible of a mayor he is. 
Ultimately, his attempts to protect the townsfolk were a misguided and lost cause. It was only a matter of time before lying and being vague about everything supernatural in the town would blow up in his face. Next up, we have the scene from the San Diego Comic-Con trailer of Pearl stating that there are things that are impossible to explain that she wants to explain. And this is clearly in relation to the homeworld, the diamonds, the gem war, things Steven wants to know, and things the audience want to know. Whether or not this is from Dewey Wins or a separate episode entirely is yet to be seen. Finally, we have a musical number from an episode that may be called The Band, a title that surfaced earlier in the year on IMDb of all places. Yet, everyone assumed it was false for good reason, but looks like that may actually be valid because Steven, Sadie, and the cool kids have formed a spooky band dubbed The Working Dead, a clear play on words on The Walking Dead. Steven's on guitar, Jenny's on bass, Sour Cream Synth, Buck might be male vocals, and Sadie is leading vocals. Their band looks and sounds very reminiscent of the horror punk genre of music. The Misfits come to mind for me specifically, which makes sense as Sadie has a big admiration for horror films as a dress in Horror Club and the new Lars. Sadie hanging out with the cool kids and being in a band with them seems to continue their friendship that was sparked between them and the good Lars, during the potluck that Lars didn't show up to and got abducted as a result. I'm happy that she's coming out of her shell and befriending more people. Although, it's ironic that it's the same crowd Lars tried to be in for so long. Crazy how life works, right? Sadie may be using this band and music in general to express herself and have a better grasp of her emotional state, dealing with the fallout of being abducted and Lars being trapped in space. I love Steven Universe's musical numbers, so this episode really has me pumped. I'm really hoping Escapism is in the Labs in Paradise episode, so that's already two songs possibly back to back. But as always, what do you guys think? I know this trailer wasn't as exciting as the last few the networks put out, but keep in mind, just because we may have BCD episodes doesn't mean all six episodes will be centered around them, nor does it mean it won't have any relevance to the overall story. Again, I'm really convinced the abductions serve as the catalyst for the town turning on Dewey. Comment your thoughts below or tune directly to me at Austric Vods. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at RoundtableVids, and on Snapchat at RoundtableYT. We also have a Discord, official Amino app, and Patreon. Links to everything in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please throw it a like, share it with your friends who just can't wait for these new episodes. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, it really helps us out. Turn on that little bell for notifications so you never miss a Steven Universe video from the roundtable. I hope you all have a good rest of the week. See you next time. Bye.